Hari Om, I'm Shridika Pillay and you are watching Sadhna The Inward Path right here on SABC3. In this series of Sadhna The Inward Path, we have some interesting documentaries that take a peek into our Hinduism, both South Africa and abroad. In today's episode, we draw attention to the Chinmaya mission of South Africa under the leadership of Puja Swami Abhedananda. With its headquarters in Chatsworth, Durban, the Chinmaya Mission of South Africa has spread across the country, taking the teachings of Vedanta to spiritual seekers. An outstanding orator and an unparalleled writer, known for his wit, humor and fiery spirit, Swami Chinmayananda inspired millions the world over. He established schools and colleges, built temples and ashrams, instituted a monastic order and left a legacy of immense strength, boundless love, tireless service and immeasurable reach. A global organization committed to making the essence of Hinduism accessible to everybody, regardless of age, nationality or religion. South Africa too was blessed by his visits, first in 1980 when the Chinmaya Mission of South Africa was born and again in 1987. However, it was only in 2006 that the first resident Acharya, Swami Abedananda, arrived from India. So he had the thought that there should be a mission. Any great work is done only when there is a grace of God and tremendous effort of the people also. So grace does not come without our putting effort. So that was the seed which was sown. After I came, I had a vision that a lot of Hindus in South Africa, Indians in South Africa are deprived of our spiritual culture because of the geographical reason, political reason, historical reason. Even slowly they don't know how to write Hindi and speak in Hindi also, no Sanskrit. So most of the temples were reciting Ramayans, which were good. But I wanted that they should go into the depth of the scriptures, they should talk about it, and there should be transformation in their life. I want the people here should not take the skeleton of religion and leave the soul of religion. A skeleton is that we are doing Satnarayan Katha, we are doing Puja, we are doing Havan, all is very good, they should continue. But the soul of religion is that my vision about life should change. Who, why I am doing action, how to serve and why it is necessary to serve. What is the purpose of a family life? What is the purpose of living this world? How unless we live for others, our life won't be complete and fulfilled. Swamiji's knowledge of Hindi and Sanskrit translated easily into the ears of seekers in South Africa transforming their hearts and indeed their lives. Carrying the message of his master, Swamiji Abedananda's influence spread and soon new infrastructure was needed. By the end of six years as resident Acharya in South Africa, elaborate plans for the mission's expansion began to materialize. Your mission is not only for the Hindus, everybody can be here. Everybody who is downtrodden, poor also, for poor we have the feeding scheme. We all have, for all is there. Those who want to learn the scriptures, those who are children, those who are youngsters, those who are very deep seekers, all kinds of people should come here. Like all rivers go to the ocean and merge there and become one. I thought everybody should come here, learn about the scriptures in the environment of loving, learning and giving. We have lost this soul of the religion. We held on to the external things. We held on to the pujas. That was very good, but that was not complete by itself. Religion without philosophy should not be there. And philosophy without religion should not be there. Ritual and philosophy both should marry. Ritual without philosophy is superstition. And philosophy without ritual is madness. There should be happy marriage of both. And this is what we do in the Chinme mission here. I see a lot. E 
Swami Abedananda's vibrant, dynamic personality and eloquent English brought feverish growth in all aspects that the worldwide mission has become known for. Courses and classes, Gyan Yagnis, spiritual retreat camps for adults, youth and children began in earnest. Every day at 4 a.m. in the rain or cold, the Swami consistently worshipped the Divine through the Shivalinga that was consecrated in South Africa by His Master. Swamiji always had the vision in his mind that more people should be associated with the mission and the mission should grow more and because there's more people coming in then our infrastructure should also grow and when Pooja Swamiji had come in 2006 it was just our, our mission in Chatsworth and it was only one fourth of this building even our temple also was very small so Swamiji spent many many years here and Swamiji always had the vision in his mind If you see around South Africa we have in Durban itself, from having one small ashram, we have three ashrams. The main center being here, the head office being in Chatsworth where Swamiji is. We have a center in Reservoir Hills, a smaller center, sub-center, and in Queensborough as well. Then we have a center now in Cape Town, we have a center in Johannesburg. And this is because of the selfless sacrifice of one great saint. There are few people who because of their past lives, they have the courage that they think, let me give my life. Swamiji is the way he inspires the individual is by his through his life. life the of See, the whatever uh, Swamiji expresses in his talk is nothing different than what his, his nature is. Seconds. You know, inspiration comes only when that particular thing is one with my nature. You, we can't fake inspiration, you know. We can't fake inspiring somebody else. Swamiji is so vibrant and so inspiring in his talks is because whatever he speaks, he's an embodiment of that. And today is a momentous occasion for these young Chinmayas, young seekers. <laughs> whose color of cloth says that as the fire is yellow and as the fire burns everything, I am also ready to burn the temptations of the world also. It's only Swamiji's pure sankalp that has manifested, that has made everything possible in South Africa. If you look at it, um, you know, it was just 10 years back or 12 years back that we didn't have anything here. There was, you know, we didn't even know what Vedant was, <laughs> what uh, Upanishads or what are the Vedas or what's Ramayana about. We were totally ignorant in that aspect. Nobody can say that I know all the topic without any delusion. There will be some delusion element is there. Even when you write notes, sometimes there may be delusion. Even listening delusion is there. I say something, you will understand something. There is an exercise where you stand 20 people on the line and you say to the first person, please tell I want water. And go to the 20th person. And 20th person will tell, Swamiji is going to bomb it. <laughs> What is in Ramayana? We hear Ramayana. But how, how I am also a part of Ramayana? Is there, there is some Ravan hiding in us and there is some Ram also in us. Let us make the Ram victorious by killing the Ravan in us. Let us make the Hanumanji active in our life. So we think these characters are only outside, but they are also in, inside. There should be inner Diwali also. There should be inner Dashara also. Outside you blast the crackers, it is good, but not sufficient. Let us blast the crackers of negativity inside also. Then there is a celebration. Life is a celebration for those who live for God, who think above themselves. All sad people are thinking about themselves. Therefore they are sad. Sadness is expression, expression of godlessness. One Purush or one self with the conditioning of many minds it is appearing as many. <clears throat> Same one space was there in the whole ash. Before it was made, it was called one piece of land is there. With the conditioning of wall, now same space is given many names now. 
some is space is called hall some is called kitchen some is called bathroom some is called bedroom some is called book stall some is called feeding hall some is called car place you are giving the same name because your attention is now on the conditioning and a functionality of that but because of this functionality space has not changed at all so it is possible that by illusion one can appear as many when i see uh, puja swamiji's life one thing which also strikes me is his consistency as i have been mentioning earlier uh, regardless of his own personal health and swamiji has been here for about 12 years now so i'm sure that you know he would have had a lot of challenges with his health as well but not once have i ever seen swamiji missing one day of puja he's always done his puja on the time and because of this uh, this effort of pleasing the lord from from swamiji his austerity and because of his expression of love and sacrifice to the god therefore you see such a beautiful ashram today the temple as you see number 1 it's very very beautiful and as soon as you step into it uh, the whole atmosphere is just very serene is totally charged and one of the reasons is because of the continuous puja that always goes on in the morning and afternoon abhishek of the shivlings been done and in the morning puja swami ji does the abhishek of the shivling 11 times with rudri part and uh, swami ji's chanting also is such that it just um, revives everything and just energizes it and uh, if anyone was blessed or fortunate to be in the temple at that time so just so those few moments you just feel you know as if you're in kailash and lord shiva really does manifest we are not converting anybody into sect we are transforming the beautiful god in it the the man which has lost his light we are just bringing back the same light showing him the same light which was hidden in him how to make wealth educations institutions are there. how to become doctor engineer institutions are there how to become good managers big big universities are there all over the world but very few institutions are there who tell how to become a good human being how to become a moving god how to become a living god we see a lot of temples how to become a moving temple so that a person should see he can see okay he is my living god he is a selfless person he is a lovable person he is the one whom i can want to give i want to follow and this was the vision which our puj gurudev swami chenmanan ji maharaj gave and this is what we are following the tradition i am not doing anything great it is just following what he has and swami ji is an embodiment of joy one expression of his joy is humor his wit <laughs> Therefore, when Samaji speaks, he has the ability to make other people happy. <laughs> Whenever you are around Samaji, I, you know, <laughs> sometimes I may be not physically in the lounge here with Samaji. I may be somewhere else in the ashram. But after some time, I'll always hear the room in which Samaji is along with the devotees. I'll hear stitches of stitches of laughter coming out. <laughs> Samaji's nature is such because he's so full of joy. He doesn't have sorrow. He doesn't have pain in his nature. Supposing I had my own family, do you think everything I'll be available? I also be dropping my child somewhere. <laughs> Do you think if I had my everybody whole mama chacha bua phupa all around I'll be available for you all the day Do you think I will be happy like this <laughs> I also would have been issues with grandson and granddaughter To sir one should be free i want everybody should get associated with this temple and get his strength from the lord and go out with the smile on their face and we have a dedicated priest here who does puja who's from india who has uh, read and heard and quite well versed so he does puja and i also get opportunity to do little puja of the lord every day lord shiva is the head he runs the whole not only universe this ashram each point you see it is his will which is prevailing not mine i am just a small servant at his feet <laughs> they all have studied very hard the fiery spirit of the master flows on strongly in his servant and south africa continues to benefit
A two-year intensive residential Vedanta course was undertaken by 17 aspirants under the tutelage of Swami Abedananda. Besides the enormous sense of personal fulfillment, eight of these sadhikas have now embraced the yellow garb of sannyas and have dedicated their lives to the service of society. In addition, several new centers have been inaugurated, with Cape Town and Johannesburg also offering insight into the glory of ancient Indian spiritual law. See, growth is of various kinds. Like we have monthly seven days stock, every month here we have. Similarly, we have, you know, feeding scheme for those who couldn't afford and who, who, who are not having that much of finances to live in their life. We have feeding scheme, we give them hampers also every month, sufficient hampers so that they can continue for a few days. I want to make them feel, those who are not loved by the house people, that this is the place we are there to accept and love you. For the children, we have Bal Vihar, we have two annual camps, residential camp, more than 70, 80 children come here, who are tiny tots also, 11, 12 years also, and they are Sevak and Sevikas, who are giving them the values. We want to tell them values are more important than valuables. Only where world advertisement you hear valuables. You put on the tele television only how good shirt, how pant is there. Parents are investing for the children but not in the children. When we start investing in the children, then the good society and good community will be made. Therefore, we have a small, we want to catch them young only. When they are hardly five years, six years, we want to bring them, teach them something. Similarly, we have for junior chick, which are from 12 year to 16 year. So for them, little higher class of books are there. Then youngsters are there. As they evolve, they have questions about God, about world, about religion. For them, another kind of study is required. As the Ganga River, flows from the, the mountain peaks in the Himalayas and it makes its way through the plains. So when we look at the any river, Gangaji, or you can see any other river as well. So that river banks, which are very close to the river, you will find that they are always lush and green. They are always wet. It may be winter outside. It may be scorching heat. But that area which is very close to the river is always appearing to be very cool and nourished and very green and even in winter also. Swamiji is like that Ganga River who has come to South Africa. As you rightfully said, we were deprived of spirituality, of the true knowledge of our scriptures. He has come in here and with this ocean of compassion and knowledge, he has wet this place and uh, rejuvenated it. So the people who live and are in proximity of Swamiji, they have no experience of, of sorrow and all these things. Like how we experience different, different seasons outside. The land goes through different changes. Those who are close to a saint, they don't experience these different, different changes. They experience his spiritual uh, dynamism and they only experience the joy of the Lord. I think uh, that this is what um, keeps us captivated at first is that we so used from our childhood of going and just hearing the own you know meaning of it but that even at home we can open our mind and see the English translation but even they it's just it's just the meaning of the words which doesn't mean anything if anyone is teaching us science if they're just telling us the formulas how do we apply these formulas what does it do you know what's the purpose of this and this all Swamiji explains and he tells to us not only does he bring the scriptures, Ramayana, Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, all of the Upanishads into our life, but he tells us the purpose of it. He makes every shlok such that it's something that's there to help me. It's not something which is far away, meant for another person or meant for, you know, some jnani or something like that. It's rather, it's meant for me and I'm needing it the most at this current time. So Swamiji very beautifully personalizes the knowledge to us. He makes it very, very simple, something that we can apply to our daily lives, something that we can use to improve ourselves. And at the same time, we can use the same thing to gain all of our devotion, love and surrender unto the Lord. When it comes to Pooja Swamiji, I don't think there's a limit on, 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 on the depth of his sadhana knowledge. The amount of transformation he has done here in South Africa is uh, unparalleled. Uh, he came here as a one individual alone from India. And the only thing Swamiji had with him was his devotion and his spirit of renunciation. And of course, the, 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 the whole forest of knowledge 
and austerity which he brought along with him. And uh, he tirelessly worked uh, serving the, the, the vision of Puja Gurudev Swami Chinmayananji. And because of that, his devotion and commitment to Puja Gurudev, today we see a very beautiful flourishing ashram. Temple is a place where my faith gets nourishment. From here to here. Because the world kicks at, hit, hits us. There is one place which does not hit us, is God. So therefore temple are lifeline of Hindus. And in Chatsworth area I felt that if we have a bigger temple, we can serve the community and people can come here very easily. And that was in my mind and God was gracious enough to fulfill my wish. So we went to India and I said everything has to be done in a very traditional manner. Even the height of the dome which you see is as per the height of Shivli, the proportion. So the length and breadth, the sanctum sanctorium which is there, everything is highly measured as per the Vedas. Because this is house of Lord Shiva. And therefore, each, each block is named after his family members. So this is God's house, not human beings' house. <laughs> we are just using God's house for him. We are all temporary people. We will all go away. His house will remain. So one is the area where our, you know, those who are in yellow clothes, they are living there. They do their sadhana, they go out, they do some talks in the universities, colleges, schools or other places and they come back here. Other is there where you know other people are living like those who have crossed 60-60 and who want to have a dedicated life, they are allowed to live there. Those who want to do sadhana. It is not a rest house, it's an ashram. Ashram means those who want to do, those who seek God, those who want to learn about the scriptures. And we have Camps also, just now we had a Ramayan, Sampoon Ramayan. So we have camps also regularly going on. So 50 people can easily stay here and they all are available. If anybody wants to stay for one week to do his own quietity, he wants to meditate, he wants to spend time in solitude, he is also welcome. So this is, this need is being catered by the ashram here. A saint, a teacher, a visionary. That's Pujya Swami Chinmayananda. A saint, a teacher, a visionary. That's Swami Abedananda, continuing his master's legacy. The lamp of knowledge lit in India decades ago continues to shine forth through the activities of the Chinmaya Mission of South Africa today.